Hello, I'm Mosgen. And I'm Daniel, and welcome to Art Talks for Beginners. If you're wondering whether a painting is by Renoir or Reynolds, then you're in the right place. Welcome. Welcome. I'm excited to see what we have today. Yeah, well, let's look at it. It's a very different painting to the other ones yes. we've seen before. Yes, this week we have a painting which looks like a landscape at first glance, but it actually offers more than it meets the eye. Mm -hmm. Should I take you through what I see? Absolutely. Let's eyes, like know. that, yeah. Tell, tell me what you see. So I think I'm first of all struck by this, this large area of white on the bottom right hand side mm -hmm. and the, the shadow that is cast by, I guess, trees. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not trees, actually. Now I'm looking at it again. We're going we're gonna to look at it in detail. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm looking at it in slightly more detail now. But there's also the, on top of that, there's a large black mm -hmm. uh, cloud, perhaps. Maybe it's rain. Maybe it's darkness. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the left hand side I see there's like a road maybe going down towards the city. Mm -hmm. I see a group of people and somebody on horseback, a couple of horses there, they're carrying flags, walking towards the city which is in the background. Yes, exactly. I see through the middle of the painting there is the path leads all the way down to the gates of the yes. city at the back which yeah, is walled. Exactly. And there is lots of, I guess, ancient looking, perhaps. There's a big, maybe, temple yeah, it, in the middle. It can be an ancient old city. Right. Yeah, that's a good catch. And then in the top left, I see that there's uh, some good weather. Yes. <laughs> Bad weather on the right, good weather on the left. Yes, that's some. And how does the painting make you feel, in general? Yeah, it's not a very, it's not easy to identify with much in the painting. It makes you feel a bit distant, I think. Uh -huh. Partly because the character, or the, yeah, the individuals, the people who normally you would interact with first, are quite far away. We don't see any faces, I guess, or maybe very yeah, small. Yeah, very faces. little. Yeah. So there's nothing that you can identify with on the personal, on the emotional or yeah, human level. Exactly. So I feel quite distant from it. It looks a bit scary, maybe in a way. Could also, be. Could be. It's it's quite dark actually. So yeah. you might feel that. That's that's completely normal. Maybe we can just analyze it further, a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Something you were on the way of discovering actually <laughs> was those shadows. Maybe yeah. you should take a closer look at them and then tell me what you see. Actually, they're not trees. And when you exactly. look at, I will. I believe you will discover what I they are. I think I have a feeling now for what they are. Yeah. When you first look at them, you think it's maybe just trees because mm -hmm. there are angles going off at different places. But now I see, especially on the middle one, it looks like uh, the shadow of a cross. Mm -hmm. And it looks like somebody's nails to the cross. Yes, exactly. Which is, and I, now when you look at the the legs, you can see the real curvature of the hanging body yes. on there. So I guess that's the shadow cast of maybe Jesus on the cross. Yes, the exactly. Crucifixion. Exactly. Yeah. And then, then discovering this, you would instantly understand what this painting is about. You say, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. I don't, would I? I don't know. <laughs> yes, you I'm would. a bit nervous now. I guess it's the crucifixion. So yes. this must be Jesus and some other. Yeah, people who are being crucified. exactly, but I don't know what moment that is when they're walking away. Could it be he's just been crucified? I guess. Yes, exactly. So. He's just been crucified, and the people who crucified Jesus are actually returning back to the city, mm -hmm. and this city is then Jerusalem. Right. So actually, the name of the painting is Jerusalem anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the crucifixion of Jesus, and he was actually put in trial in Jerusalem by the Jews, mm -hmm. but at the same time when Jews were living in Jerusalem, it was a Roman property. So Occupied. Roman Empire, yes, Roman Empire ruled the lands. Mm -hmm. And eventually the executioner of Jesus is the Romans, they executed him. And after trial, they take all the prisoners who were to be executed on crucifix to a hill outside Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which is called Golgotha. Here, what we see on the right on the white uh, hill you see is actually Golgotha. And the shadows you see there are the shadows of the people who were crucified in Golgotha at that time. Mm -hmm. And one of them in the middle actually is Jesus. Next to him, we see two more people because Jesus was crucified at the same time with two thieves. Mm -hmm. the, oh, reason, yes. the reason for this is because Jesus was executed uh, and put into death sentence in the worst way possible mm -hmm. to humiliate him to to just give a lesson to everybody who claimed to be the king of the jews to make an example out of it exactly so mm -hmm. they just put him in the lowest condition as possible crucifying somebody is the worst thing you can do to them because 
these people are put in crosses and they are left on this hill to die for days. To bleed takes, out, yeah. Yes. And in or animals country. come and eat them and mm -hmm. it's a horrible way of dying. Mm -hmm. And on top he's crucified with two common thieves. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's again, it's really bad. So he, he's put in the same position with the thieves, although he didn't steal anything mm -hmm. and he didn't literally do anything bad in this sense. So that's why we see three shadows there. That is the explanation. And when you look at the figures, you might get closer. And then when you get closer, you see they even carry some leathers. Uh -huh, ladder, yeah. yeah, the leathers they have used to put on the cross to just carry these bodies up and just go down again to nail them. That's why these are the tools they have used. And so it's kind of showing the logistics of the crucifixion. Exactly. And right. just making it super clear that these are actually the people who just climbed up the leather that, to put him up there and crucify him. Those with the blood on their hands. Yeah, we can say. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, also when you get a closer look at their clothes, for example, especially the two guys in white, uh, white clothes tunics. from the back, more mm -hmm. tunics we can call them, it's the Roman clothing. Mm -hmm. And also the flags they carry are the flags of the Roman Empire of the period. So we make it absolutely clear that these are Roman soldiers who have been to the hill, crucified them and are going back to Jerusalem following the path. And what painter does here is to put the hill on the corner of the painting and just, just putting the shadows, it just creates a tension in the painting. Yeah. It just mm. creates a different uh, angle as well. It's an off-camera shoot, we can say. It's mm -hmm. like putting a simple, uh, putting a different way of cinematography. Exactly. That wasn't yeah. actually discovered back then when the painter was doing it puts, this. It puts the viewer sort of ahead between the crosses and those who have done it. It's sort of, they're over your shoulder. If you think about where you would be in the rest of the scene, you would be standing with them just over your right shoulder. Yes, more or less. Is a really sort of... You're standing at Golgotha with them, more yeah. or less. They're just beside you. And mm -hmm. it makes you feel like a like somebody who watches a movie right you may feel like that it, exactly. it feels like a movie scene as as the viewer you're just at the very back and you see the crucified people mm -hmm. also you see the uh, people going down the road and you see the city in the background and all the weather conditions mm -hmm. so it's a full cinematographic different angle that yeah. you don't see in religious paintings really Another thing to focus on, on this painting, is actually the weather condition that you have discovered. Mm -hmm. The blue sky and the pink clouds on the left. Which like is sunset, a, yeah. Sunset, very yeah. nice weather though, it doesn't feel bad. But on the right hand side, you see the weather gets darker, it becomes almost night. It's, yeah, it is very dramatic weather. Yes. I think this is... It's very. Like, I haven't seen rain like that. I don't no. think ever. Very, very black rain. Because it's not rain. That's right. why. Uh -huh. Because according to the biblical uh, story, uh, the sky became dark when Jesus was crucified. Uh -huh. At the same time, during the daytime, the sky became darker. So not like an eclipse or nighttime? Might be. Or... Might be. Okay. We don't know. But the storyline is like this. Mm -hmm. So the painter is actually showing us how the sky became darker when Jesus was crucified as mm. well. So that's why we see the crescent moon on the corner and the sky getting darker. So he also makes us understand for sure that it was actually clear skies, but mm -hmm. the darkness came later on. Yeah, you see the clear skies in one place and then the darkness here. But yeah. if you think about the extension of the painting to the right hand side and the where I'm as the viewer, where I'm mm -hmm. standing, then there is very light sun or very a strong sun, I guess, on the crosses themselves, casting the shadows. Yeah, from so the if, other angle, yeah. Yeah, so if you think about like the frame, then this black part is in the middle, and then over here it must still be sunny. On the yeah, part. somewhere from the back we still have some sun. Right. But that also shows the artificiality of this weather condition, maybe, mm, that yeah. it's happening all of a sudden. It feels more supernatural. Yes, I guess. exactly. When we look at the environment, do you think it's plausible? Does it make sense to you? Does it look like Jerusalem? Does it look like Middle East? I've never been to Jerusalem, but... I'm Still? going to take a guess. Take a guess. For sure. It looks quite green in the background, so I'm guessing because you've asked me that question, the answer is probably no. Um, I see that there are trees here as well. I don't, I don't know what the sort of geographical... Before getting you into, into that direction <laughs> too much, maybe I should tell you that the reason I'm asking for is that it it's actually is very plausible now. Oh, okay. Because the painter has actually been to Middle East and uh -huh. seen those places. He has been to the Holy Land and Unlike he has me. seen it. <laughs> yes. 
actually what he paints here is quite stony, very arid climate. We see some trees here, but it's mostly olive trees on the on the foreground, mm -hmm. just behind Golgotha Hill. There are some green pastures in the back, but still it has it shows uh, an arid climate. We don't see a sense of forest here so much. So it's not idealized like the Renaissance paintings where we see crucifix, but in the background it's green forests of Germany, for right. example. It's yeah. not like that. Okay. Instead, it truly looks like Jerusalem. And at the same time, when we look at the city, city also looks, I mean, we cannot uh, capture all the details, but the painters still try to make it look like the actual Jerusalem of the period when Jesus was crucified 2000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So all of these details are actually coming with uh, the, the background of the painter and of the period where art changed into showing these kind of historical details in, in paintings. That's why they care. Mm -hmm. If it was an older painting, then it, then it wouldn't care about showing these details or they wouldn't even know how Jerusalem looked like because right. they will be people in Italy, in Germany, painting this and they have never been to the Middle East. But this painter did. Or with so, an idea to idealize it, maybe this is more of an attempt to realistically... So, exactly, yeah. that's also another way of doing it. The Renaissance or Baroque painters would probably choose to idealize it, mm -hmm. while this painter chooses to stick to the historical details and show it as accurate as possible. Which is later. I yes, guess. much that's later, accurate. that's yeah. going to help us to, to identify the time of the painting later on. Mm -hmm. So do we have enough detail to be able to work out what period this is and maybe take a guess at the painter? Sure, uh, we can make guesses, of course. What we can do is, when we look at the painting, we see that this is a very clear history painting mm -hmm. uh, because it sticks to the historical facts instead of idealizing it. So we may then instantly understand that it's not like an old type of painting like Renaissance or Baroque or Rococo, it's much later. So mm -hmm. it's most probably 19th century, okay. late 18th century or 19th century when uh, advancements have been made on archaeology basically uh -huh. because these are the times after the end of 18th century archaeology becomes a big deal mm. and people start excavating archaeologists start excavating cities in in Roman cities in the Middle East in so many different places so they discover how actually those ancient people right. used to live and that's how they're able to reconstruct it in this exactly mm -hmm. more or less they they know how much i mean i don't exactly know how much they knew about jerusalem at that time mm -hmm. but at least they have some clues about how they live because before that time before archaeology comes in picture they don't truly know how those people uh, fed yeah, themselves how the they lived like. what did mm -hmm. they had on them how the cities looked like mm -hmm. they only looked at old old paintings maybe, and there are not many paintings from ancient times, only look at some sculptures maybe. Mm -hmm. That was the, their idea of and discovering guess. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. And when we look at this painting, we can see that it's in the academic style because it mm -hmm. sticks to this historical facts and it, it has a smooth surface finish. We have seen it in the De La Roche painting as well. It mm -hmm. was very smoothly done. It, the, the, the surface of it does not include so many brush strokes, despite mm -hmm. it's a it's a landscape painting. Is there a particular area we could look at for that? When you look at the stones, for example, they mm -hmm. look perfectly made. Mm -hmm. You don't see much brush strokes. They just look perfectly rounded stones where you can see the details of how the shadows and how the cracks on mm -hmm. them look look like. Okay. I see a name here. Yeah, exactly. He put his, his own name as well. He, yeah. Uh, graffitied maybe one of the stones. I'm yeah. <laughs> this is a way of putting a signature in different ways. Can I read it? Yeah, I'll try to do that. It looks like two words. Uh, the second word starts with G, I guess, E-R, uh -huh. Jerome. It's, it's actually Jerome. Jerome, It okay. starts with a G, okay. you're right, it's Jerome, it's a French painter. Uh -huh. And the first two letters you see are J I and L, because Jean Leon, uh -huh. it's Jean Leon Jerome. Okay. It's a French painter, and he actually studied under De La Roche, so he's mm -hmm. De La Roche's student, so he has seen and learned from him how, how one should paint historical painting. Mm -hmm. So you said this was a French academic painting. Yes. Maybe the, where does that put it in terms of time? Late? It's actually late 19? 19th, late okay. 19th century. The, the painter Jérôme, he painted this in 1867 mm -hmm. and it was exhibited in 1869 in Salon Paris, which is the exhibition 
place of the academy in right. Paris. Mm -hmm. And when it was exhibited, I can talk about the reactions, but maybe you can think about the. Uh, you can guess okay. how was it treated. How do you think it was received by the art critics of so the time? So this is in the Salon Paris, I guess it's uh, pretty, that's like high art, right? It's where all yes. of the best painters are exhibited. It's... Academic painters where right. the academy supports so those painters. Yeah, and it's very strict, you should remember. Exactly. So and very conservative. Think, but the, the subject matter is quite shocking. So I guess it's probably, yeah, more with the reaction. I think it's probably, I mean, the fact that it's in the Salon Paris, I guess, means that it's... Um, accepted by art critics and by art somehow they accepted yeah. they at least put it in there to exhibit it because right. we know that there were so many painting painters at the time who were not even exhibited in right. the salon because they they were found very off very controversial yeah but i think i mean the, the makeup of the picture is a, is a little bit hard to get into i think there's not sort of a focus in the middle isn't there's something that's i can't really decide what the reaction might no, be no just think, think about makes, just think about how the painting is put how the story was put in the painting. Think about this is a religious painting mm -hmm. and it tells us a story in a different way that was never done before. Mm -hmm. yeah, Jesus Do you think the critics shown, would guess. like that or not? Yeah, that is the question. Not, yeah. yeah, I guess I mean normally if you're showing the crucifixion, you show Jesus' suffering and you show the blood on his body yes. and his suffering, right? Exactly. But here we're showing the people who are pictured in the frame are Absolutely. the perpetrators, the people who killed him. Yes. The uh, focus as you have guessed right, the focus is on the Romans who are returning to mm. Jerusalem instead of putting the focus on Jesus. Right. As you have described here, Daniel, we, in a classical crucifix scene, we see Jesus, we see the two uh, thieves crucified next to him, mm. and we see the onlookers or his relatives crying by the cross. We can still see the Roman soldiers around. But the focus is always, always, always on Jesus mm -hmm. and his suffering. And his death. Mm -hmm. But this time, what Painter did is he turned Jesus and the thieves into mere shadows. Right. And that was uh, considered very badly from, the, got a very bad critique from... from Anti-religious. Yeah, yeah. Not maybe truly anti-religious, but mm -hmm. they felt like... Jerome had taken a step towards simplifying the subject matter and taking the importance and focus from Jesus and put it somewhere else. Right, uh -huh. Although it was, I believe it was very a very modern way of looking at this very Quite classical bold. scene, very bold. Yeah. But bold things don't work with the academy. I guess yeah. they don't like it. <laughs> they don't like tradition. anything new mm. because academy means tradition. As right. you say, they want they have this frame and they want everybody to fit in this frame. If you want to do something different, then do it. Don't do it at the academy. Mm -hmm. That's what they basically say do it somewhere else. to to the painters. So, and this was actually the most controversial painting that Jerome has done in his career, okay. and he got bad reviews from art critics for many years when he painted this, and even after his death, it was still criticized mm -hmm. by many critics for a very very long time. When we talk about Jerome, I believe we should talk about how his career developed because he's a French academic painter who mm -hmm. was educated under Delaroche, but he followed the fashion of the day, which was actually to turn turn towards Orient, towards the uh -huh. East, and paint uh, subjects from from Eastern life, basically Turkey, Greece, North Africa, because at the before that time Napoleon had been to Egypt and he. He conquered Egypt, and so the French society had some way access to those eastern countries, mm -hmm. and it was a really interesting, fashionable, fashionable topic for right. them to focus on these eastern civilizations where they had not much knowledge about. Mm, something so, new and exotic. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. very exotic. Exotic is the right word here. Mm -hmm. One last thing we will look at today is actually something that Jerome preferred in his paintings. So mm -hmm. that's why I have prepared three different paintings by Jerome that you will look at and you will try to find a common pattern that you see in these three other paintings and the Jerusalem painting we have seen. Wish me luck. Yes. <laughs> Let's try. How are these after Jerusalem or before? Some of them are after, some of them are before. Okay. Right. But very close timing. Okay. So I'll look through all three of them first of all. Yes. Okay, two of them have in common the... Uh, this one and this one have a dead figure uh -huh. in there, 
which is similar, I guess, to Jerusalem in the way there that is some uh, death happening. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. there's also movement away. Uh, yes. in this one from away from the dead body. You're getting closer. And here as well. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Oh, let me see. And the first one. one. Look at oh, there's a dead body here. Yes. In the first one as well. Okay. So abandoning the dead is that they're leaving, walking away. From walking away. So, but a it, murder. Yes. Well. Yes. But what you don't see here is actually you don't see the actual happening of the murder. You don't see the yeah the actual the violence. Committed. Right. You don't see it. The first painting is how Caesar was killed in the Roman parliament and the people uh -huh. who killed Caesar are living away. Brut uh, Brutus. Brutus yeah. and, and the others, uh, the other consuls. Mm -hmm. The next one is execution of General Ney. Mm -hmm. Again, another French general during, after uh, the time between revolutions and empire and republic in France. Mm -hmm. And he was killed, he was executed. But we don't see the execution. And the soldiers are leaving away. We see a moment scene. that, or maybe a few minutes afterwards. Yes, yeah. exactly. And the next one is actually uh, a duel after a costume party. Uh -huh. Two people had a duel, and one of them is dead, and the other one is leaving the scene. Which one is the fighter? Okay. Fighter is the one on the right. The so that okay. that one is has managed to kill the left one, is mm -hmm. leaving the scene, and the left one in white costume is dying. I have to. I really like this one. The the the, the shapes in the yes. in the painting. Are it really has a really nice nice flow from left to right. Yeah. But when you go back to the Jerusalem painting, mm -hmm. you see the same thing. Jesus is crucified, but we don't see the main actors killing Jesus at the time. So mm -hmm. what Jerome does is he prefers not to show the actual violence in his paintings, but the aftermath right. of what has been experienced, mm -hmm. what has been done. The painter shows us the dead person mm -hmm. and wants us as the viewer to, to take it in and see what happens after somebody is dead. Right. We're, we're kind of looking at from the dead person's perspective a little bit okay. or looking from a very outside perspective, seeing the person who's been, who was killed mm -hmm. and the killers mm. and we see both of them and it's it's us as a viewer to to judge uh the aftermath the right. after effects i'm sort of thinking about the soul now it, we're kind <laughs> of like left as the soul of the dead person looking over the moment that has happened and the kind of creepy again yeah a little bit <laughs> maybe it, it's not the best piece i've chosen again yeah, if you want to get depressed i hope it doesn't get in your nightmares again <laughs> <I hope they're not. laughs> maybe okay <laughs> So this is a very impressive picture, I'd have to say. I mm -hmm. think, uh, yeah, there's a lot of story behind it. If I wanted to go and see it somewhere, where would I go? The painting is in, in France today still. It's Stay a French France. painting. Mm -hmm. And it's in Musée d'Orsay in, in Paris. Okay. So you can see it there. I yeah. actually have seen it last year. That's why I was so impressed by how it looks. And reading the story about it, I was even more impressed. So I felt like we should talk about this painting mm, definitely. this week. That's all for today on Jerome's Painting Jerusalem. Thank you very much for watching us. Stick around for more of my stupid questions about these art pieces. And stay tuned for Art Talks for Beginners. Goodbye. Goodbye.